Hey guys, welcome back for another Jurassic World Mattel tour review. We're back at it with Jurassic World Dominion and we're taking a look at what you see in the title and thumbnail, the Strike and Roar Giganotosaurus, which also happens to be a controversial dinosaur toy. Again, here is the Giganotosaurus right up here. It actually really looks really good from this distance. I'm not even gonna lie. Actually having this in person, I actually started to really like it more than I thought I was going to like it. Of course, I've seen the videos. I've seen it all. I've seen people like it. I've seen people dislike it up to the core. And I've seen people make over exaggerations. I've seen it all. I'm here to just go to give my day thoughts and viewpoints on this figure. And already, aside from the obvious issues this toy has, I'm very grateful that we got a Giganotosaurus from this toy line. And yeah, I do expect a better one to come out someday. I don't know if Mattel will make another one, but... We all know they might make another one, but it probably won't be another mainline one. Hopefully it should be because this definitely is up of a rumored improvement. But then again, it, what we got so far, it's pretty nice. I will give it that. But of course, I'm jumping ahead too much. We should go over the package. So of course, this big package here is the standard Jurassic World Dominion logo and uh, aesthetic with uh, Rexy in the background looking really great with the prologue setting, which is also cut up a little bit and blocked a bit by the Giganotosaurus and the action features and the scan code capabilities. As usual, from the other side, you do see more of it, but I'm not gonna go over it because we already go over it in the past on one and right here is just the Jurassic World logo and the other end is just the Power Raptor as usual. We're not gonna go over that. So we're gonna turn it over at the backside, seeing the detailed image of the, uh, well, the digital image of the Giganosaurus, basically shaking around, striking and killing off another dino on hand, which I probably forgot the name of. And then the other side, you see the Thrash and Devour Tyrannosaurus Rex, which I've seen so many times at this point, and the Therosinosaurus, which, Yes, I will be getting that someday. So I'm not holding off on it any longer, but I will get it someday. So now that we got all that out the way, let's go ahead and get this controversial dinosaur out of the package. I really hate saying controversial, but you get my idea. Alrighty, so now we got the biggest car the world the world's ever seen out of the package. Of course, there are some obvious issues. The size, the action feature, and of course the proportions in some areas. But I'm gonna push all that aside and go focus on the positives of this toy because yes, I am a big fan of the Giganotosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion. It has a very awesome design. I don't care about the inaccuracies because who the heck cares about accuracy in Jurassic? In my personal opinion, I really loved it. It was such an awesome design that they went with. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look at closer look at detail of this creature because god dang, I really love it. So of course we're at the head scopes and um so far, the only issues I really have with the head sculpt that it's just a bit too wide. That's the only thing I have a problem with is it's got this very wide looking look to it. It's not, I mean, you can still see its eyes, but it's not nearly as narrow and threatening looking as the one in the film. And of course, the teeth are very serrated like Indominus Rex-like. That's another issue. It definitely looks a little bit like a much more smaller scale Indominus Rex. But other than those two issues I have with the head, Looking at it from side detail, it looks exactly like the Giganotosaurus from the movie, aside from just the obvious issues. And aside from the very, like, like the eye looks a tiny bit sleepy, but I'm not going to complain because the eye doesn't look too badly painted on there, so it looks definitely fine. And there is no paint on the top of the head, which makes it a little bit, uh, lack well, obviously very lacking. But, um, other, okay, other than that, it does look pretty nice. So I really do like the way the uh, head is textured and everything. It's not nearly as like extremely detailed like uh, the T-Rex, of course, which I'll compare it a little bit. But of course, it looks pretty nice from this angle. Everything is nicely detailed, especially like packing on the legs again, like on the thighs here and the arms. They all look incredible. Just that incredible level of detail. You can see it pop and it's so sharp. It's got so many scars, of course. They're not painted. And this is what Carl Jabaro was referring to as like the Joker side of the Giganotosaurus is that it's got so many damn battle scars. That's all it's really referring to is not the personality. It's really just the scars. It's a very animalistic dino in my personal opinion. It's not like a monster like the Spinosaurus, which I love. And it's definitely not like the Indominus or Indoraptor or even the dang Scorpius Rex. It's literally just the most animalistic I've ever seen in the Jurassic, in the Jurassic franchise, especially Dominion. So... Yeah, personally, I really love the Giganotosaurus and the design. 
of this toy. It does somewhat of a justice, but it just has some obvious issues. Just overall, the sculpting is pretty nice. It's just certain areas in the execution are basically 50-50 for me. Especially like um, whether it should be bigger, especially just this, like these ridges up here. They should be a little taller, but they're obviously a little smaller. I guess it's just really proportion wise. Dinosaur definitely does need some scaling up to do. That's all there really is to it. And the paint job of the dino is actually pretty decent. I mean, it's not nearly as good as it should be. There should be more black paint covering literally the entire top area, including that head. So it can actually really look really good. So that's really all I got to say about the detailing and paint schemes. Like, literally, it's got the usual detail and proportions are very good. It's a very proportionate dino, but the scaling, it could be a lot bigger, but it's just a very proportionate dinosaur. It doesn't have a huge head like the T-Rex. So that what make it, that's what makes it really good for me is that the head isn't really too big. So yeah, the detailing is very nice. And let me open that mouth. You can see the detailing inside, which is very pale pinkish color, I guess. Like a very, very pale color. You can definitely see the texturing in there. It looks very good the gloss coat and everything. As usual, they really do knock it out of the park with that detailing. It looks very nice from every dang angle. And again, here's the teeth, which are obviously in a separate sculpt not painted just like the t-rex the uh stomp and escape t-rex i own which is really great don't have to worry about uh problems with the paint and the teeth because it's just a separate sculpt although the only problem that, like i said before it does got that serrated teeth it doesn't have the uh normal looking teeth like the giga is supposed to have so that's basically my only issue oh almost fell but i got it and um yeah, the sculpt, everything about it looks very neat. It's very incredible. Like, that's what I really like about this Giganotosaurus toy. And it's still an appealing toy, regardless of the issues. And of course, the issues obviously lie within the action feature and the size and the, the head. I just went over those uh, things. So we're going to go over the action feature as presented. I mean, all of you might have seen it now, but I'm going to demonstrate it. Oh yeah, another issue, this tail. Doesn't align to an action feature, so it's just a regular like whipping tail. It's not on the button like the uh, bite and fight T-Rex, which is the only tool I can remind it of. It basically, it's Dino Rival's action feature, but with no button attached to it. So that's basically kind of a mishap right there. But I think it was probably intentional to have this wagging tail like this. It's not too bad, but it's also not really a great thing for others, I guess. But for me, it's not that bad. So I kind of like it. So again, the uh, action features, again, this thing is wobbly. <laughs> so press this button over here. It will be doing some thrashing maneuvers and it'll make some crunching noises or thrashing sound effects. Then on the bottom right here where I'm pressing, which I don't have to go over too much. It's like right down here obvious point right there it roars and that is pretty nice and the dinosaur sound effects they choose for the dinosaur sound effects is pretty nice as far as i'm concerned <laughs> hmm, that's probably another one of those thrashing sounds but yeah it's basically pretty pretty nice action features the biting mechanic is obviously the best one. Oh, i almost broke that hopefully <laughs> so yeah the action feature definitely is a lot of fun especially for younger kids of course and um oh yeah scan code as you all see right there, but I'm not going to go too close because everybody's else already seen that. To me, it's a pro and a con. It's only a con because of posability, but a pro for like really fun, like playability. And the only pose you can, you can get it into if you can is to make it like this so it can still be steady. It actually doesn't look too bad. So I definitely like how it's not the end of the world for me when it comes to the posability. Though I will say Marco Mix did a fantastic video on how he could uh, fix his Giganotosaurus to look exactly as posable and it movie accurate. So yeah, even if I like this toy as much as he does as well, I definitely would like to say that that video definitely made the Giga toy look a lot better. <laughs> I would like for mine to be like that too, but 
for what we got so far, I'm still pretty grateful. It's a pretty nice toy. Just, yeah, I really love the detailing of this whole dang toy. And it's, this, despite those issues I do have with the toy, it's not as bad as most people would say it is. It's just got the obvious problems with it. And the scaling is obviously the only issue to be uh, accounted for, but it's really a nice toy. I'm gonna go ahead and put this down and compare it to a few dinos. So of course we're gonna get it with the baby and the super ceratops right here. Of course, dwarfed, no, um, no comment needed there. And then we're gonna get the um, juvenile Conotaurus from the Owen Escape Pack. Oh, it fell over. Okay, there you go. Definitely dwarf right there, but you can definitely see the scaling. And then we're gonna get out another Conotaurus, which is Toro. Almost on the same scale, but obviously dwarfed. Then we're gonna get a T-Rex out because this is the one I was gonna compare it to, the T-Rex. This one actually does look like it fits really well with it. And of course I got this T-Rex out. It's just one of my favorite extreme chopping T-Rexes because it just looks so good. And uh, you can see the scaling of it. It definitely fits because, you know, the Giganotosaurus is a pretty big creature, like bigger than a T-Rex as far as I'm concerned. So um, this definitely does fit the scaling, though does it fit the scaling of another T-Rex toy? The Thrash, uh, no, Stomp and Escape Tyrannosaurus. Now both of these are in the exact same scale and I kind of wanted it to see if it can really go really good with these, uh, with the Giganotosaurus. And I think, yeah, actually, yeah, that that's perfect actually. This T-Rex is actually perfect for the Giganotosaurus because in terms of scaling, doesn't look too big, doesn't look too disproportionate. They both look as proportionate as one another. Also, the Thrash and Devour T-Rex has just got a big freaking head from when I keep looking at it. It makes it look bigger. So yeah, this looks just great. I love it. <laughs> I really love it. So yeah, that's this T-Rex here. Let's go get out another bigger dino that should be on the same scale, but I'm not sure. Spinosaurus, the Can Cretaceous version. Looks like they're on the same scale, but obviously Spino is bulkier. So, hmm. They look like they're on the same size with each other, but that's up to personal debate. They look really good together though. They look like they could be friends, although Spinosaurus really need to control his attitude. <laughs> and of course, here's how the Giganotosaurus should be scaled up with. Like the size in general should be in the same scale as the Indominus Rex. This is the only toy that I ever owned that anybody else would own that is literally the biggest carnivore ever made in terms of like just the land carnivore i'm not talking about no seed carnivore like the uh the mosasaurus but i'm like out of all the big carnivores they release the indominus is actually the biggest <laughs> like it definitely dwarfs the giganotosaurus so that's kind of unfortunate that it's in that scale but at the same time i'm not too broken up about it but again it should have been like the same scale as this i mean the indominus rex really does dwarf the giganotosaurus in terms of the scale but they still look kind of good with each other so um, that's all I gotta compare it to right there. Also, let's go ahead and get this vehicle out because that's how big the Giganosaurus is right next to it. And here it is right up against four characters from Dominion so far. We don't have Maisie or Malcolm or Ellie Sattler yet, but we have to wait. <laughs> Gonna probably wait like the next two, three months for those. But hey, they kind of look really good together, of course. Like, the Giganotosaurus should be still bigger, but at the same time, it still looks pretty nice with each other, just scaling it up like this. I mean, it looks like a lot of fun. Just really good. I can't wait to complete uh, this whole dang uh, collection and just reenact that really iconic and fun scene from Dominion, one of my favorite moments where they just meet this beast. It's just so good. I really am looking forward to completing this whole dang thing just to just to have more fun and i can't wait to get that dang chaos outpost set which i will get someday just gotta figure out when and how to actually get it because it's not very easy to find right now Alrighty, so that actually took a little less longer than i expected to review this toy because i kind of seen all the other videos and stuff just to go over what i liked and what i disliked about the giganotosaurus but really it's just a nice toy regardless of the issues that i have with it and I can agree with it's just such a really fun toy and the more I look at it it's just really really fun I mean yes it could have been better 
but I'm not complaining. I really am grateful that we got this toy. So as far as I'm concerned, this is basically it for the Giganotosaurus from Jurassic World Dominion, the Strike and Roar Giganotosaurus. Yes, I'm going back and reading remembering it. So yeah, it's a pretty fun toy. It's not perfect, but I definitely recommend picking it up. I mean, yes, it should be better, but I just don't like, you know, seeing the fact that people should pass on this because someone really doesn't like it. I mean, pick it up. It's still a nice toy. I mean, this thing should be at least $39.99. That's a better price point. I mean, if you really want to get it, definitely wait for a price drop. But if you really do want to get it without waiting on a price drop, definitely pick it up. It's definitely worth it, aside from the issues. That's all I gotta really say about it. It's definitely just a fun toy. That's all you gotta take. Take it from me. It's a fun toy. But of course, I am waiting on a bigger and better one soon in the future. So that's basically it for this review. And I'll be seeing you guys later for more toy reviews. We're gonna go right back to Canker Cases for the next toy review. So basically, I just wanted to go over that. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching.